So, we have seen that a complex network is made of three fundamental ingredients. First, we need a nonlinear model describing the behavior of each individual agent in the network. Secondly, we need a communication protocol that describes what information is being sent between neighboring agents. And third, we need also to specify who is talking to whom in the network. In other words, the structure of the interconnections between the agents. If we think now about the control problem, we can act on the network in three different ways. We can control the behavior of some individual agents. We call this controlling the network through the nodes. We can control the network through the coupling protocol. We call this control through the edges or and this is a completely revolutionizing idea in control theory, we can control the structure of the interconnections between the agents themselves. In fact, if we go back to natural system and we think of a school of fish or a flock of birds performing escaping, escaping maneuvers in the presence of predators, we see thousands of individuals performing very, very sophisticated evasive maneuvers in the presence of these external attacks. But we know that there is no external leader. There is no fish captain in the school that is telling everybody else what to do. So we want to replicate this. And once we have mathematized the problem, we can then use graph theory to understand, as we will see in the next segment of this lecture, what and which agents to control and how. Once you have done this, once you have solved the controllability problem, there is the next hurdle, and it's what information can we acquire from the network and how do we process it in order to close the feedback loop, in order to decide how to steer in real time the behavior of the agents we have selected for control in order to achieve a macroscopic goal on the network level. This control problem is a very challenging problem and is a multi-scale control problem. Why? Because we can identify in our complex system three different scales. At the microscopic level, the agents are evolving, moving, acting and communicating with each other. On top of this, we can define a mesoscopic layer where groups of agents are clustered together and they perform coherently in groups. And then we have the macroscopic layer, the upper one, where the network as a whole exhibits emerging properties, collective behavior that we want to control. Now, what the problem is, is that we want to close the feedback loop between these different scales in order to control the collective behavior of the network, but we can only influence and measure the behavior at the microscopic level of some of the agents. So the challenge arises on how to close the control loop across different scales and how to do this effectively and how to mathematize these control laws so that they can be coded in microcontrollers, in embedded controllers in our technological applications that the robots or drones or cells, etc., can embed within themselves in order to steer the behavior of the ensemble where they are connected with one another. Now, solving this problem is a challenging mathematical and theoretical question with a huge impact in many applications. Think of autonomous vehicles or platooning or controlling the behavior on motorways of the future of many interacting autonomous vehicles. Think of controlling traffic where we can go beyond the open loop strategy of just switching between the green, red, yellow cycle in traffic lights, but we can have different traffic lights coordinating with one another in a real time and in a feedback way, which means measuring congestion on some of the roads. Think of the internet of the future, where TCP IP protocols are not able anymore to sustain the amount of traffic that will be happening in the near future. Think of smart grids or power grids made of many renewable sources. How can they maintain the desired 50 or 60 hertz frequency when we have electric vehicles being charged or discharged, when users can become consumers and producers of energy on microgrids? scale. 
how do we coordinate the behavior of smart grids of the future? Think of robotics, where we are now thinking not of having 10 or 20 drones, but thousands of micro drones that form swarm. How do we control their behavior? And finally, I want to mention a set of applications that is particularly close to my heart, biomedical applications. In my group, we are now to con trying to control populations of living cells so that they can coordinate their behavior and release drugs, for example, for chemotherapy, in a personalized ways where it is needed. So from life sciences, to medicines, to technology, this is a problem common to a plethora of different applications. In my group here in Naples, and I will show you some of our recent applications, we are working on the control of these large ensembles of nonlinear dynamical systems. We look at human-machines interactions, where you might have groups of people interacting with virtual avatars that will have to perform joint tasks with them. Think of sports of the future, where mixed teams of humans and robotic agents will have to coordinate their behavior. We are looking at power grids and smart grids distribution and how this will affect that in large national projects. We have funding to look at cell behavior in synthetic biology, engineering, control strategy at the microscopic level in, or in living cells in order to control their behavior. And finally, we are interested in the control of multi-agent systems at large in many of the applications I mentioned to you. I want to say that control is only part of the problem. Sensing and measurement, and I know this PhD school is precisely about that, is another huge problem. I talked in this lecture about the problem of who we have to control. But if we want to control something, we need to be able to measure it. And the problem is that, as I said before, we are controlling agents at the microscopic level. So how can we measure the behavior of some of the agents and deduce properties on the entire ensemble that we can then provide to our control intelligence infiltrated in the network in order to control the entire behavior? So from the theory viewpoint, from control to mathematics, to sensing and measurement theory, to information theory, we need an interdisciplinary approach to solve this problem. They cannot see theorists acting on themselves, but they should see an intimate interaction between theory and application. I call this the golden virtuous cycle, closing a virtuous cycle between theory and applications where theory stimulates new application problems and can help the applications, but applications stimulate on themselves, by themselves, new challenging theoretical problem. This is the right, right area to be if you are a young PhD student and you want to enter a research area full of challenges, open key research questions and applications, and you want to make a change to science and technology of the future. With this, Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy the rest of this lecture. Thank you.